everybody, Todd Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So we promised a winter outlook update and here we are. So there have been a few changes that I've noticed with this most recent update. This got updated about four days ago. We're a little bit behind schedule, I know, and I apologize. It's been a wacky few days on my end here. But some things that I've noticed with this most recent change here that the below average temperature probabilities have now been extended a little further out east here. So whereas before we were kind of seeing it more confined to the northwest here, we're now looking at the Dakotas coming into play. And then the above average temperatures have also made a little bit of an advance here. There's higher probabilities for the southeast now. Not too much has changed over towards the southwest here. And then also the battle line between these two air masses also has become a little bit more pronounced. So I do have some questions in regards to what could happen over towards the Midwest in regards to winter, along with the deep south, maybe over towards Dixie Alley in regards to severe weather. More details with that as we go further along. So with that, we're also going to go ahead and take a look at one other thing before we move on to the precip outlook here. I almost forgot to mention it, but I also see those above average temperature probabilities sneaking their way into the Northeast now in the Ohio Valley. Before we were kind of right on the cusp, I would say, we were seeing equal chances here, but we've had some of those above average temperatures probabilities now sneak up into parts of the Northeast here. Even the Great Lakes could be in play here for that. So this is probably the most notable change that I've seen in this update here. And that's actually going to be over towards the Great Lakes. And this is good news, really, if you ask me, because we've been dealing with some severe drought at times throughout the year here. We've had patterns here that have helped kind of bust that up just a little bit and hopefully this could be the finishing touch for these guys here parts of the ohio valley are also going to be in play with this as well as in regards to that above average precip here we really were hoping to get a little bit more in the way of precipitation over towards ohio and west virginia here where the drought is most significant here you can actually see the drought map here in the top right corner but some areas that unfortunately are going to struggle with drought it's actually going to be over towards the southwest, of course. And this also could come into play for our spring severe setup. Maybe even an early start to spring, maybe even the end of winter could come into play as well. Then over towards Florida, we're going to be expecting a very quiet weather pattern. It's not atypical considering the La Nina that we're expected to have and that we are having now. So brace yourselves if you're if you got some crops over there. You're going to be you're going to probably be needing to water a bit more. Just how significant the drought gets still is questionable. I still th think there will be chances of rain here and there, but right now it just looks like the weather pattern there is not going to be very busy. But in any case, though, another good indicator of what could be coming is also going to be over a look over towards Alaska. And this is mainly applying to anyone in the Northwest. So we're kind of in a <coughs> equal area of uh, variability here. We do see a large area of above average precip towards the northern part of the state, but towards the southeastern part of the state, we're slightly below average on the precip here. There's equal chances right behind that as well. Whatever moves through Alaska usually drops southeast, and eventually we'll see it go through the northwest and then transition through either Canada or maybe the northern tier of the U.S. So, like I said, it's a little bit questionable here, but confidence is relatively high considering the time frame that we're looking at with the above average precip probabilities here. So go ahead and go a little further here. As we get into January, February, March, the maps look relatively the same, but in particular, what I'm paying closer attention to is those above average temperature probabilities and the below average temperature probabilities. In particular, Alaska is kind of what captures my eye more than anything else here. So maybe an exodus of cold air awaits probably towards the beginning of next year. I would say maybe January and February, based off of model runs that I've been seeing before now, is going to be the driving influence behind why we have this bigger area of below average temperatures that extends now down into Nebraska. I'm, I'm particularly interested in January and February. I do think that winter storms might be a little bit more active around this time. Maybe severe weather might come into play. Very similar areas though, nonetheless, it's gonna be that collision of air masses, masses like we talked about here. I really think over towards the 
Mississippi River region might be the point of interest for severe weather. And then towards the central plains and the northern tiers of the Midwest, we could get more in the way of winter weather. Like I said, still pretty far out, so more or less hearsay at this point. Just really more so my thoughts. In regards to the precipitation outlook, again, this has kind of been what's been the eye catcher for me over the last few runs that I've seen, is of course over towards the Great Lakes region, Ohio Valley, the chance of above average precipitation actually improves here. We're now looking at 50 to 60 percent there. And then over towards the deep south here, starting to see a little bit of a drop off in the below average precip probabilities to go along with it. So again, I'm kind of thinking that this is going to end up being a battle zone as we go further along through this three month average here. And then as we look at the final months, as we start to close in on spring here, we start to get above average once again. And then the below average temperatures kind of start to retreat just a little bit as we get into March, April, May. Of course, as we know, by March, we're getting into spring at this point. But along with those uh, seasonal precipitation outlooks, however, notice that the below average precip here now becomes more confined towards the southwest. Again, I really think this is going to come into play for our late winter and early spring tornado season for both Tornado Alley and Dixie Alley. And then also, of course, the below average temps towards, below average temps towards Florida or precip, excuse me, towards Florida comes into play as well. That being said, let's go ahead and actually take a look at what we already know here. Just making sure we're covering all our bases, but not a surprise. And this is even going into spring at this point. It's really not going to be till March where we get out of our La Nina pattern here. Anyone that doesn't know, La Nina starts at negative 0.5 degrees Celsius in the Nino 3.4 region. This is the Enzo. But as you can see here, this is looking at November, December, January. You can see that we're well above that or well, well below. I cannot speak this morning. We're well below the negative 0.5 degree threshold here. And we start to get a little bit warmer in this region as we go further along. Like I said, really not until March where we start to get to that negative 0.5 and then starting to warm up back into the neutral phase, which is between negative 0.5 and 0.5 degrees Celsius here. So next thing we'll do is actually go ahead and take a look at the drought here towards this region. So there's a couple of reasons why I keep mentioning the Southwest in regards to its drought situation here. If anyone, anyone who's a little bit more weather savvy here, you should know what the term EML is, elevated mixed layer. Usually this has a lot to do with dry air towards the mid levels of the atmosphere. So with the drought coming into play over here towards this region, this is usually a good generator of EML as we get later into the spring. Usually helps with the uh, severe weather setups here whenever you have an EML setup. Other factors, of course, come into play. But with that being said here, if we get drought to build up here, which is what's anticipated, that could lead to a slightly busier severe season, maybe more significant storms. Of course, that's all hearsay. We're still very much far out. And honestly, we're hoping that's not the case. But just in case it is, we want to be on top of the game here. As far as the areas that are expecting above average precipitation, the good news is Ohio Valley right here, definitely looking like we're going to start to see a lot of this drought get busted up, if not removed completely. And the same thing over towards the northwest here. I do think the atmospheric river might come into play here for these regions. So where we're seeing the drought, especially in the yellow and lighter orange colors here, I do think a lot of that is going to dissipate, which is good news, especially for this region over here towards the northwest, considering the crazy wildfire season that's been ongoing there. So hopefully we can get a good reduction of that. In any case, though, let's go ahead and take a look at our model data here now. And what we're going to be paying close attention to really is going to be our two oscillations here in particular. This is the Arctic Oscillation towards the top of the screen here, right where you see this little circle. And then over towards Greenland, we have the North Atlantic Oscillation. So by November already, it looks like we have a little shot of cold air coming into the region here for <clears throat> the Northwest. And as we continue to go forward, we kind of enter a weird neutral phase where we see that we're on more so the tail end of a negative NAO phase and maybe beginning a positive AO phase 
towards the start of the month. Now, this is over a 30 day average. This is not showing what it's going to be like week to week. We're still way too far out of range for that. This is a seasonal outlook, if nothing else. But notice as we get towards January, this is where I think things really start to get interesting here. Still have this warm air mass much further off to the south here. This cold air is going to try to make a push. So I do think we're going to get some kind of collision here at some point. So maybe a severe weather setup in January. Kind of hard to tell right now. Could be some stratospheric heating going on here. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that as well. So could be a significant cold blast on the way too to go along with it. A lot of variables coming into play at this point. See a see an even stronger signal for stratospheric heating as we get into February 2025. And this is really kind of piqued my interest. Depending on how this uh, troughing goes, that could be a big deal for a lot of us here in the U.S., especially towards the northern states. We could have some very frigid temperatures here as a result. So as we go further along here, and this is right towards the end of winter heading into spring, we have a negative AO and NAO phase here. So I would anticipate at some point we would see some cooler than average temperatures over towards the northeast, at least at some point during the month. And then over towards the deep south is going to be a question of just what exactly we could get. Like I, th I think really we could get just about everything. Severe weather would be possible. Winter weather would be possible towards the Midwest, deep south even. But like I said, it's, it's more so hearsay at this point. Just really going over my thoughts on this based off of what I'm seeing right now. So if we look at the above and below average temperatures, it's going to be kind of erratic, especially as we go further into winter here right now. We're pretty confident in the above average temperatures for the month of November here. So this is when we get into the start of winter, start to see those above average temperatures really become more focused over towards the southwest. That's where that drought is likely to start building. January is where things start to get interesting. Start to see a really strong signal of below average temperatures coming into play towards the northwest. A little bit off of the uh, northeast coast here in particular. So depending on how things pan out, maybe even nor'easter could come into play. Who knows? As we get into February, look at the warming trend that begins over here towards the central plains here in the southern plains. Like I said, depending on how those cold air masses come in, how those cold blasts come in and interact with this, severe weather definitely seems like it would be on the table here possibly. And then as we get into March, of course, warming becomes more significant, but I still think some cold blasts are possible here and there. Of course, by this point, we're looking almost five months in advance, so this can easily go the other way. So that being said, like I said, just really kind of going over more so possibilities at this point. So no surprise here, as we mentioned before, November and December, looking at above average precip over towards the northwest. High Valley gets into play here. Pretty much dry over towards the southern half of the U.S. here. Typical El Nino, uh, La Nina pattern here. And then as we go for as we go for January here. Look at the activity that starts to build up over the southeast. Again, I'm thinking that we're going to have some shots at severe weather here. I do think that there could be some winter weather over towards the central part of the U.S. Then as we go forward here, notice how the amount of above average precipitation starts to increase over towards the Ohio Valley as well. Maybe even parts of the Ozarks. Anywhere towards the east of the northeastern parts of the Mississippi River region here also could be a point of interest then as we get towards march of course we're going to start to see a little bit more focus towards the midwest and the deep south for maybe severe weather could be an early start again like i said just more so a theory at this point nothing to really confirm off of this because of how far we are out how far out we are at this point here so that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video you found it useful make sure you guys are smashing that like button decimating that subscribe button and i will see you guys in the next one until then take care and have an awesome rest of your monday